Okay, so in this problem we're told a 96 kilogram crate starting from rest is pulled across a floor with a constant horizontal force of 350 newtons. For the first 15 meters, the floor is frictionless. And for the next 15 meters, the coefficient of friction is 0.25. What is the final speed of the crate? So first let's understand what's going on by drawing it. So we have this crate. We know it starts at rest, so we can say V sub zero is zero meters per second. Uh, it's going to be pulled with a force of 350 newtons for 15 meters. And then at that 15 meter point, we know it, there's going to be uh, some friction, right? So it's frictionless here, and then there's actually friction here. Uh, the coefficient of friction is 0.25 for this 15 meters. And what we're trying to find is the speed of the crate at this point. So we can say V equals question mark. Uh, and yeah, so we're given mu sub k, where the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.25. Uh, and we're also given the mass, which is 90, uh, 96 kilograms. And so let's talk about how we're going to solve this problem first. So the way we're going to solve uh, this problem is by using uh, the work energy theorem, which basically tells us the net work done, W net, is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. So if we can find out what the net work is, we can find the change in kinetic energy. And now why is that useful? So uh, the formula for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, meaning the change in it, right, the change in the kinetic energy is one half mv final squared minus one half mv initial squared. Uh, the reason this is is because uh, m and one half are obviously constants, so the only thing changing here is the velocity. So if we take uh, final minus initial, that gives you change, uh, and so this whole thing results in the change in the kinetic energy. Uh, what you should notice is, though, uh, at the beginning of our interval, the uh, velocity is zero. So initially the velocity is zero. So V initial is zero. So basically the change in the kinetic energy in this case is just one half MV final squared. MV final is the velocity at the end of our interval, which is what we actually want to solve for. So uh, if we can find the net work done, we can just uh, solve for VF since it's going to be the only value left. It's going to be the unknown. So we need to find the net work now. So how are we going to find the network? So we're going to do this in a couple ways. So W net. So what is the network going to be? So we have to uh, add up all the work done by the different forces. So uh, we have to add up the work done by the force just pulling it. And then we also have to add up the work done by the friction force, since the network is just the total work basically done, added up. Um, and yeah, so starting with the uh, work done by the force, uh, you need to know that work equals force times distance times the cosine of theta. So uh, force, obviously in this case, is 350 newtons. Uh, and then what is this, uh, the distance that this force is going to, or how far is this box going to move? So we know it's going to move 15 meters here and then 15 meters here. So the total distance that this force is being applied is uh, 30, right? 15 plus 15. So uh, we have 350 to get uh, the work done by, or the force, times the distance, which is 30, multiplied by the cosine of theta. So let me explain what theta is. Theta is essentially the angle between the direction it travels and uh, where the force points. So notice the force is pointing this way, and the box is going to be traveling along this way. So they're right on top of each other, essentially. So if you have two uh, vectors like this, or just arrows, you can imagine, right on top of each other, the angle between them is zero. And so if you imagine it like this, right, this is the angle between uh, two of them like this. Uh, but if they're right on top of each other, it's zero. So uh, in this case, theta is zero. Uh, the cosine of zero is just one. So really, we can just cancel that out. Uh, and that's going to give us the net or the work done by that one force, which is the 350 Newton force. Um, and yeah, but keep in mind, we also have to add the work done by this friction force. So once again, it's going to be FD cosine of theta, but the force in this case, let me do it over here. It's going to be the force of friction since we're not dealing with just the, we're, we're working with the force of friction in this case. Like the last one, we just solved for this force. Now we have to do uh, the other one. So for this, you need to know the force of friction. The formula for it is the coefficient of kinetic friction mu sub k times F sub n, or the normal force. Um, but yeah, so this is going to be equal to mu sub k, f sub n, d 
times the cosine of theta. So what we want to do is just solve for all these and then we'll add it in. So mu sub k they tell us is 0.25. Um, let me do that. The normal force in this case, uh, let's solve for that now. So uh, how do we get the normal force? So if we draw a free body diagram here of our box, it doesn't really matter where you do it because it's the same. But essentially, we know the uh, gravity is going to be pointing down and the normal force points up. These are the only forces in the Y. And so uh, if we sum the forces in the Y, we know that they're going to be equal to zero. The reason this is is because F equals MA, so it's M times the net acceleration. But keep in mind, it's not moving at all in this Y direction. So if it's not moving in that direction, uh, acceleration is zero. So we know it just equals zero. And then zero equals, and then we just add up our forces, right? Summing them. So F sub n, if it's upwards, we call it positive. If it's downwards, it's negative. So F sub n minus mg. Uh, and this basically will just tell you, moving this to the other side, the normal force is equal to uh, the force due to gravity. So this should basically be something you can just understand right away. Uh, I just wanted to show you how we did it. But uh, yeah, you should know this from earlier chapters. But this tells us F sub n is mg. So what is the mass? The mass is... Uh, 96 kg, I believe, yeah, times, so it's mg, so g is just 9.8 meters, right? It's just the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8, it's a constant. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's f sub n, right, this thing right here, times the distance. So uh, here, notice the coefficient of friction, or this force, the frictional force, is only being applied through this 15 meter interval, it's not this 15 because it's frictionless here. So the distance that this force is being applied is only uh, this part, 15 meters. So plugging that in times the cosine of theta. So uh, keep in mind, like last time, theta is the angle between the direction the force is being applied and the direction it goes. So we know the force of friction travels opposite to motion. So if it's moving this way, right, it's traveling that way, the force of friction is that way, right? It's slowing it down. Um, and so if you look, we have it like this. Now, what is the angle between these two? So the angle between these two is like this, which is 180 degrees, right? So you can kind of imagine it like a, like a, a unit circle. We know this is 180 degrees. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's going to be cosine of 180. And so cosine of 180, you should know, is minus 1. So if the force is opposite to the direction it travels, your work is negative. So essentially, uh, this is just going to be a negative right in front of that. So when we add these up, we're actually uh, adding a negative number. So we have plus minus 0.25 times 96 times 9.8 times 15. And then obviously the negative sign originated from that. And so now it's just a matter of adding it up. So let's do this. 350 times 30 minus 0 0.25 times 96 times 9.8 times 15. So you'll get 6,972. Keep in mind this is joules. And now we have the network. So it's just a matter of doing this right here. 6,972 equals 1 half m, right? m is 96, the mass, times v final squared. So if you wanted to solve for this, you would just multiply both sides by 2, divide by 96. So don't forget that. And then to get rid of this square, you would square root both sides. So let me just write it like this. So we have 2. Keep in mind there is a parentheses there. 6972 divided by 96. So square rooting both sides gets rid of that square. And uh, yeah, so rewriting it one last time. You have the square root of 2 times 6972 divided by 96. So let me plug this into my calculator. 2 times uh, 6972 divided by 96, and then second square root that answer. You'll get the final velocity is 12.05. So 12.05 units of velocity. We measure it in meters per second. Uh, but yeah, so 12.05 um yeah so 12.05 meters per second that's going to be uh the velocity so uh the speed right here is 12.05 meters per second and uh yeah so this is your answer 
and hopefully you found this useful.